Hi class, today we're going to do some secondary dominance. And you're like, what is that? What is that? Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. So um, we all know that the whole concept for Western music is the concept of this. We're not done. We're not done yet. We're not done. Now we're done. At five, it goes to one. That concept is was first decided by Western Europeans in about the 1600s. Up until then, there's many, many other music systems that have been around the world for thousands of years. Some uh, like a lot of melody, like Indian music or Arabic music. Some think a lot about rhythm, like African music. Um, and But none of them have thought about, here's a chord, and this chord goes to this chord. It's just a different concept. So we think about five and the all-powerful dominant chord, the all-powerful dominant chord, five going to one. So when we have five to one, we think about, ah, oh, it's this powerful chord, and we always show an arrow going from the five chord to the one chord to show that we have this resolution. And in fact, when we have a two chord, and then a five chord, and then a one chord, then we're gonna put a little bracket. And I like to think about the two chord, going to five. The five chord, it's like, you know, this big superhero, like Superman trying to go to the target, to, you know, to save the day. It's, big second, it's a big dominant chord going to his target. And that the two chord, he sort of comes along sometimes. He's like the sidekick, you know, uh, every superhero, he's got his little sidekick. So sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. And then if he's there, then they get in the, you know, they get in their car and they drive and get to one. All right. Sort of silly. But these two chords are linked together that we have this two five and then one and we call that a jazz cadence here at berkeley this two five one concept and it's so strong that it, it occurs for other chords as well so um i want you to think about this five going to one the dominant chords like to move down a perfect fifth from g to c is a perfect fifth and that d minor seven is the two of c and G is the five, and then we go to C. So this is true for other chords as well. So far, you've studied um, diatonic chords, chords that occur within a key. We have seven of them, one major seven, two minor seven. Everybody together, three minor seven, four major seven, five dominant seven, six minor seven, and the seven minor seven flat five. And each of these chords have different weight, and the biggest weight we have is that five, that five, that five that goes to one. So now we're gonna talk about some other chords. Now this is the primary dominant chord, primary. And today we're gonna to talk about secondary dominant chords. There are five chords that we're gonna to introduce to you today. Chords that are not directly in our key signature, but that we can use and still sound pretty darn inside and that will move us to new chords. So I want you to think about, I'm gonna pull up a document here, and I want, what I want you to do is uh, uh, think about in the normal sense uh, that we have, uh, let's say we had a C major seven, going to A and going to D. So, so we have one, six, two. Now, if we turn that A chord into a dominant chord, it moves really powerfully, powerfully to that D minor. Now, A7 is not in the key of C, but A, the note A, is a diatonic note. And A7 is the fifth of a diatonic chord. And that's going to be our rule. We're gonna have five chords that, one, have a diatonic root, and two, are a perfect fifth away, perfect fifth away from a diatonic chord. These chords will all have an accidental in them because they're not one of the seven diatonic chords, but they're a new chord called a secondary dominant. Not the primary, but a secondary dominant. So we have C, not done. We're not done. Ah, it made it to its target. Now it's not as powerful as five going to one because we haven't arrived at one, but we did arrive at a diatonic chord, so that works really nicely. All right, let's look at another one here. So we have C major seven. That seven chord is pretty 
weak, seven minor, seven flat five, going, and then we went to our three chord to E minor. Well, what if instead we took that diatonic root of B, changed the chord, made it get B7. Now it's got a D sharp and an F sharp in it. It's the, a dominant chord now, a dominant seven chord that's not in the key of C, but it's built on B, which has a diatonic root. And it is the fifth of the three chord, three chords, sorry, fifth of the three chord, so it is a secondary dominant. Gets us to there, so we're gonna put an arrow to show that it's going to its target of three, and we call it the five seven of three. B seven is the five seven of three in the key of C. Let's try another one. Um, so let's keep on moving. There's five of these. So normally we have C major seven, go to F. And that's nice, but what if we had C major seven, C seven, so powerful it wants to go to its target that's because western music has made a sound in our head that we say we love dominant chords resolving down a perfect fifth this c7 it's not diatonic in the key of c because it's c e g b flat but it has a diatonic root and is the fifth of a diatonic chord so we can use it in the in the tune in the key of c right? Gets us to move forward. This is not dissonant music like some weird jazz chords or something like this. This works really totally nice. You know, it's kind of Billy Joel kind of harmony. In fact, we'll look at Billy Joel later on this semester uh, and see how he uses these chords. We're, you know, when we get back to class here, we'll check it out. All right, here's another one. So we have 5-7 of 2, 5-7 of 3. We just did 5-7 of 4. Now we're going to do, we want to get to our 5 chord. We're on 1. Nor we go 2, 5. What if we take that D, that's the two chord, instead of D minor, we use D7. D7, D, built on the second degree of the C scale. It is a dominant chord with non-diatonic notes. It has an F sharp in it, right? Uh, but it has a diatonic root and is the fifth of G, the five chord. So we call it the five seven of five. And we write Roman numeral five seven with a slash, Roman numeral five seven with a slash and then five. We say D seven is the five seven of G. It's a secondary dominant. We have one more. We had five seven <clears throat> of two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna do five seven of six. This is the last one. We wanna to get to A minor, our six chord. Fifth of A. <clears throat> what is the fifth of A? E. Because I go A, C, E. Oh, it's the fifth note of the chord, right? So now we're going to make that a dominant seven. E7 seven is not in the key of C as a diatonic chord because it has G sharp in it, but it has a diatonic root and is the fifth of a diatonic chord. So we say it's a five seven of the six. <laughs> Getting the idea? Now, once we have that, with each one of these secondary dominants, we can put that sidekick. These are powerful chords, We're trying to move down a dominant fifth. If we think of that first one where we went C major seven, and then we had A seven to D minor. C major seven, and then we had A seven, five seven of two going to D. Now, we're gonna take that, and right before it, we're gonna put the two of D, ah, E minor. Let, let you hear that again. It makes a little two five one. 
but it's not going to one, it's going to two. We call this the related two chord. The related, because it's related to D. It's the two chord. Now in this key, it's also the three. It's diatonic. Sometimes these chords are diatonic, sometimes they're not. We put a bracket to show this two five progression that E minor seven to A seven goes to a D. And if it has a Roman numeral that is diatonic in the key of the piece, then we say, oh, it's got two functions, dual function, and we'll put that Roman numeral as well. Let's go to another one. Five, seven of three was B7. So let's put, what is the two of E? In other words, a whole step above E is the F sharp chord. We could have F sharp minor seven or F sharp minor seven flat five. It's a little chord progression, a little cadence. We call it a 2-5, um, and we put a bracket here. Now, F-sharp is not in the key of C at all. So no matter what kind of F-sharp chord we put here, we're not going to put a Roman numeral here. But it is a related 2 chord. It's pretty distant. But it gets us to 3, and that's what we got, a little progression to get us to 3. Let's try another one. We're going to go to 4 using the 5-7 of 4, C7. Five, seven, four, four to four. Now, what is the two chord of F? In the key of F major, just forget the tune and think about the key of F major. What is the two? G minor. So we could put a G minor chord here right before the C7. Pretend like we're in F. We're going to F. We have a big arrow of the C7 going to F. And preceding it always is the related two chord. It's optional if we want to use it. It makes a really nice... Seven of four to four. This is the two five. It made salsa totally happen. R and B, everything. Everybody uses these two fives since like Bach. We hear these a lot. It's not dissonant. It's not in the key. G minor has a B flat, but we use it because it's getting us to this F chord. So we're using chords that are related related to the five chord that is getting us to our target, our diatonic target. Let's try five, seven, of five. So C major, and then we play a D7 to G7. So what in the key of G? In the key of G, one sharp, what is the two chord? A minor, A minor. So we could put an A minor chord right before that D7. So we're in the key of C. in the key of C. It's our sixth chord. So this chord has two functions. We say it's dual function and we're going to call it um, the related two going to the five seven to five that resolves to five. But we're also going to say hey it's also six minor seven so we'll put that there. And then our last example was five seven of six. So we had E seven to A minor. So now we're going to put in this B minor 7. Well, I'm going a little far here, but anyhow, you get the idea. We have B minor 7 to E7 to A minor. And at any time, this chord, the B minor 7, it could be B minor 7, or it could be B minor 7 flat 5. If we use the minor 7 flat 5 chord, it makes it sound like it's going to minor. If we use a normal minor 7 chord, it makes it sound like a 2 chord in a major key. So we can decide if we want to make it sound like we're going to our target or if we want to trick the listener. All right, that's a lot of information. We're going to work on this for a long time. And the project that you just finished, where you had a diatonic piece, we're going to eventually install some of these secondary dominant chords to see how we can punch up a normal diatonic progression with secondary dominant chords. It's a great way to add really a lot of movement to diatonic harmony.
All right, so now uh, you have a, uh, an assignment to do that's online. Here's a wonderful picture of Superman and his, you know, his secondary dominant going to the target with an arrow. We start on a diatonic home base, and then our superhero with, you know, that's like, you know, uh, Batman and Robin. Did Superman have a sidekick? I don't, I don't know. Well, anyhow, um, so we got our related to and our secondary dominant going to their target chord. So... Um, what you have to do for your homework is in the supplement. I want to go over this for a second with you just so you can understand it. So the first one is done for you. We're in the key of C, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put the 5, 7 of the 2, and then put the 2. What I like to do is I like to fill in the chords first. What's your 2 chord? D. What's your 3 chord? E minor 7. What's your 4 chord? F major 7, and so on and so forth. And then go backwards and say, what is the fifth note of this chord? and make it a dominant seven chord, and that will be your secondary dominant. So D, F, A, C is how we spell that. The A is the fifth of it. A7 goes to D. Likewise, E minor seven, what goes here? The fifth of E minor is E, G, B. So we go E, F, G, A, B. It's a fifth, fifth note, right? So we're gonna put a B7 chord here. These are your secondary dominants. And now here we are in different keys, in key of B flat major, key of A major, you gotta know your keys. You have to know your six chords, the five chords that are going to happen in each of those keys and be able to label them. Now, there are only five secondary dominants. That's because the one built on the fifth degree, that's your primary dominant, and we don't have one built on the seventh degree. So you're going to fill out each one of these in a different key. Fill out the right side first. Fill out all the two, the three, the four, the five, and the sixth chord, and then figure out what's the fifth note in the chord and make that a dominant seven to four, and then draw an arrow to show it. And then you're gonna do the next page, and this is sort of uh, like a math assignment in a lot of ways. There's some information given, and the, you have to fill in the blanks, and there should be enough information for you to figure out everything. We're look, talking about secondary dominant chords, and you're gonna bring this to uh, class, and we'll go over this. So we're in the key of C, and we're, our target, is E minor seven. We use B, the fifth of E, to get there. And we, since this is the three chord, we call this the five seven up three. Next, we're in the key of E and we're going to F sharp minor seven. Well, what is F sharp minor seven in the key of E? That's our two chord. We're gonna use the five seven of two. What is the fifth of F sharp? F sharp, C sharp. So we're gonna use C sharp seven. Now here we have the five, seven, and four. A seven is the fifth of a four chord. Well, what is A the fifth of? So you have to go, what's a perfect, in what key is A the five chord? Oh, in the key of D. So we're gonna go to D, it's a four chord. What's our quality of all our four chords? Major seven. And so in what key is D the fourth? In what key is D the fourth? So you're gonna count backwards from D and go, oh, A major. So in the key of A major, if we want to get to the four chord, we'll use the five, seven, four, and it's A7. In other words, we turn the one chord into a dominant chord and put an arrow to show it. All right? Write me with any questions that you may have, uh, and we'll go from there. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.